Picking up from where I left off, we've got a housing, shafts and gears. We need a way of restraining these shafts. At the moment, they're just sitting loose in here. So these bearings fit here. Let's make these bearing housings. I'm not going to bother countersinking these. There's three that are going to be made out of here, so I might as well do them all afterwards. In the end, I cut these off from the bandsaw and I've just faced both sides. So I've pushed the bearings into these. It's a very light press fit. You don't want to overdo it, otherwise you start crushing the bearing and it won't spin freely. This stock is going to be used to make a dog clutch. This will interface with two of the gears. I turned all the features in one setup. I had to resort to the bandsaw to part it off though. Now I just need to face this off. This is our dog clutch that will lock in either of these gears. Cutting the dogs will be a slight challenge. I need to hold these somehow on the mill so I can then cut dog teeth in here. I can't really clamp on the outside of the gear or on these flanges, so I'm gonna come up with a method of clamping on the bore. This will become our expanding arbor to go inside the bore here. I don't want the bronze bore on this damaged, so I've made this out of aluminium. I also added a counter bore and put the taper in deeper. The outside of this expanding arbor is gonna flare outwards, especially at the tip. Back here it won't so much. So by sinking this taper further in, this will be able to push from deeper in. It will give us a better mating surface. I've eyeballed this on center, good enough what I need. Now just gonna plunge in and put six slots in. Now just need to quickly make up a fastener for this expanding arbor and we can use it. Before breaking something and trying this out, I just wanted to see that it actually works first. Hopefully I haven't flexed this out permanently. I'm slightly deformed this, but anyway. So that's obviously not holding. Ooh, nope, that's not coming undone. All of these parts have a lot of work in them, but if this slips at all, one, I'm gonna break an end mill, and two, it's gonna wreck this dog clutch here. And I really don't wanna to have to remake these parts if I can. I conveniently have my scrapped gear from the last video. Let's at least try this out and see if this works. I really wish I didn't flare that out now. There's no need for the two sides to be clocked in time with each other, but I'm gonna at least eyeball it so it's about the same. I built a bit of extra clearance into the dogs to make sure they do mesh very easily. Now I just need a little shifter for in order to flick this backwards and forwards. The shifter for this, I do want this sort of fork mechanism I want it to grab both sides pretty well at the center point and use that to slide it across. Let's go to the mill and we'll tidy this up.
Okay, we've got a square block. Now I need to cut a window out of here. Okay, so I need to cut this shape out. But before I do that, I've got some cross holes to drill. Once we cut out this middle section, this candle over here is going to want to flex a fair bit while drilling this hole. So we want to do that now. Okay, we've got a shifter fork. Hopefully you can see why I chose to drill these holes first because at the moment we've got a diving board situation here. I just want to tidy up these edges. I've jumped ahead a bit. Over at the mill I've got this bronze in the vise. This will be a wear pad that engages against the dog clutch. I'm just going to tap this and part it off and we've got our block. So this dog clutch will be able to free spin, but then the shifter is able to move it backwards and forwards. So the original plan was to mount this vertically here and but now that I'm looking at it in this position, I could always run a shaft between the front and back faces and mount the shifter more like this. I haven't decided, we'll see how this turns out. While I'm pondering that, let's make a start on mounting this reduction gearbox. So I need a mount here so I can attach into this input shaft. Well, this is pretty typical. The world that you're never gonna see is the pretty one, and the one on the outside is just ugly. The reason why this ended up being so bad, I didn't leave enough bevel to fill. I deliberately left all this crowd, so I'll be able to grind this down. It's got a slight rock, but good enough for what I need. That's flat enough for me. When I was in horizontal, I milled two vertical faces here. Using these two faces, I'll establish a center line. Now I'm gonna work out from the center line to establish all of my holes. Now I know what you're thinking here. That edge distance isn't very much. Yeah, I agree, I should have made this bigger. It'll be right though. And drill this side, and this bracket's done. This dog clutch needs a keyway putting in it, and I've got the perfect tool for it. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll be aware that I have this new mill. It's still being restored at this stage though. And this slotting head came with the mill, and it'd be absolutely perfect to cut this keyway. It's not restored yet though, this will be coming soon. To put this slot in, I've come up with a really high tech, exciting method. There we are, keyway. So I wasn't able to broach this full depth, so I'll have to finish this off with a file. Okay, it took a while, but I've got a nice keyway. What I want to do now is properly mount this gear. I'm thinking a slotted hole up here, and then a stud for this gear to go on. I also drilled some holes in the side, and I put some bushes in these.
So I've only got one of the bronze pads in here and it's actually working okay, so I might accept it as it is. Now I need a way of actuating this shaft from the outside. I just need to extend it a little bit with something and then we'll add a knob. Now we just need a power cable. I've put an aluminium key in this shaft and this interfaces with the gearbox. This is the failure point if something jams up. These stainless tubes fit over these shafts and the stainless mixing paddles are attached to these. Okay, so I got the tubes. These mushroom things are going to be stainless mixing paddles and I need a fair few of these. I noticed early on my template was getting torn up, so I've added some center punches just to mark out this shape. Let's go cut this out. In my design, I was actually aiming to have these too thick. And I'm starting to look at this and think this is overkill. So I might just run with the one thick option and that means I've got plenty of spares. So I had a fair few of these spares and I did a few tests on these. What I need to prevent is penetration into the bore. And you can see on my first few welds, this was quite bad. However, after a bit of practice, I got a lot better at this. I've marked out this tube where all the blades need to go and I've made up this guide. This is a snug fit on the bore and the idea is this perpendicular face lets me align the blades. These panels have been put on straight because this goes on the shaft that has no direction. So if it spins this way or that way, it doesn't matter. This tube and its panels go on the shaft that's always spinning in the one direction. I want to angle all these paddles so they're directing clay inwards to the centre. And that way it chops, pulps it up and pushes it down into a central chute. This straight guide earlier worked really well, so I just need to modify it to have an angle. I put a 25 degree angle on my welding guide. No research on that. It looked about right. So now we'll put these paddles on. If I flip this around, we can angle our blades the other way. These sleeves are loose on the shaft at the moment. I'll just drill a cross hole and put a stainless screw in there. I'm going to use a stainless hex bolt with a nylock nut. If I have a socketed cap screw, it's just gonna fill up with clay and it's gonna be a nightmare to get out. Using the angle grinder, I rounded all the edges. It's time to bog this and paint it.
The paint is dried and now it's assembly time. I still need to add stainless chutes, but I think first we'll test it out with clay. Ready? So there's quite a few lessons that came out of this. Mechanically, everything worked brilliant, but in practice, the mixing of the clay just didn't work. And that's because I started down the wrong path right from the beginning. So if you remember what this thing was for, it goes on top of the pug mill, and the idea is that it drives clay down in, and that idea there, and dropping out the bottom, is where I started heading down the wrong path. Having two shafts is where I went wrong. Because I've got one of the shafts that can be reversed at any time, the problem is the swept path of the blades. They cannot intersect with what I've got here. Because if they intersect, they will hit when being reversed. When you look at commercial designs of these, they've got a single shaft and the swept path of the blades fully is 100%. It fully covers the entire barrel. What I've got, I've got dead space between the blades here and at the edges. And that means clay can just sit there and not move. I recognise this, but I kind of thought maybe the clay will be cohesive enough that it's going to grab it and it won't be an issue. Plus I've got the angle on the blades, maybe it's going to drive the clay sideways. Apparently not. So these blades just cut straight through the clay and that was it. I'm going to start again on this. Let me know if you want to see another build of this. I'll reuse what I can. Anyway, so if you've got any ideas for what I could repurpose this stuff into, let me know. And let me know if you want to see the single shaft concept. I had fun building it, and I hope you had fun watching it. Catch you later.